All right, today I'm going to talk about Clint Boyer's future with Stuart Haas Racing. Will he return or not return in 2021? But I will get into that in a minute. But before we do get into that, I want to do a special giveaway. Just a couple of days ago, about a week ago, I guess you could say, the folks from Mitsubishi gave me some cool gear, race gear. And they gave me a full 124 cell size truck of Chase Briscoe where he drove it at El Dor last year in the truck series. Awesome diecast. I cannot wait to get this signed from Mr. Briscoe. Uh, but they also gave me some gear to give away. I got three t-shirts. Here's one, a Diet Edge t-shirt. Diet Edge is a tool that Mitsubishi makes. And it's a super comfortable t-shirt. It's a cool one too. On the back, you got an engine. On, on the sleeves, you got uh, Mitsubishi. And on the other side, you got Roush Yates. It's a cool t-shirt. And right here, Chase Briscoe is a Diet Edge uh, supporter. So his Diet Edge logo is on his World of Outlaw cars. So you got one right here, which is black. And you got a gray shirt right here. But many of y'all, I am doing a giveaway, but many of y'all might wonder, how can I be entered in this giveaway? Well, it is simple. All you gotta do is comment down below and subscribe to my channel and I'll pick a winner this upcoming Sunday. But let's get into the Clint Boyer talk. Brian Priest and you're watching William Blackwell on YouTube. All right here, let me address the elephant in the room. Clint Boyer, driver of the number 14 Rush Truck Center's Ford Mustang for Stuart Haas Racing, he happens to be on his contract year. And he has been performing that well this past year. Uh, but we're going to start from the year he finally came to Stuart Haas Racing back in 2017. In 2017, Clint Boyer came to Stuart Haas Racing after a devastating 2016 season racing for Harry Scott Motorsports in the number 15 car, where he averaged a 23.6 finish, which was the best in team's history, but it was not a good feeling for Clint. Clint thought he was going to contend for top 15s and maybe top 10s every other weekend. But Clint didn't get what he expected, but he still managed to finish the best in team history. Uh, but after that, he went to Stuart Haas Racing. Many insiders thought that Clint Boyer was going to have a down year because he's been through three different manufacturers and three different teams in the last three years. And many of them insiders were correct. He did have a down year in 2017. He had zero wins, six top fives. Uh, he had a runner-up finish in a couple of those races. And 13 top tens, 22 laps led, which is not going to get the job done if you're racing for a Stuart Haas team. It just, it's just crazy. 22 laps led, it was terrible that year. His average starting position was 13.2. Average finish was 15.5. And nowadays, if you finish below 10th, your chances of making the playoffs are slim to none unless you win a race. And Clinton did not win a race that year. And stage points, he did not get many of those that year either. And he had four DNFs. And DNFs are a big thing because it takes a big hit in the points. But fast forward to 2018. Uh, Boyer knew he had a win. He had, he had a winning caliber race car week in and week out. But he did happen to win two races in 2018. It started off on a Monday at Martinsville where he passed Ryan Blaney, middle of stages at a race, and ran away with it. And then he had a win, a Michigan race where it was rain shortened. He had to hold off a hard charging Kevin Harvick for the win. Uh, Harvick took four tires while Boyer took two. Many people thought, including myself, that Boyer was going to get smoked on that restart, but he did hold on for a couple laps until the caution came out for Stenhouse. I remember that day vividly. I'm a Clinton Boyer fan. Uh, that was a big day. But he has two wins in 2018. Uh, nine top fives, 16 top tens, 490 laps led, and an average starting position of 13.7, just a little bit down from the year before and an average finish of 13.8, which is an improvement by two positions. And a total of six DNLs. So he was contending for a lot of wins that year. Don't get me wrong here, but the DNLs were pretty bad. Uh, I, I, I guess that's what you can say about ruining his chances because he did happen to have a DNF at the final race uh, before Homestead at Phoenix where he blew a tire and wrecked out. But we could have probably won that race and made it to the championship four. And who knows what would have happened if he would have made it there. But fast forward to 2019. Uh, many people thought that Clint Boyer was a dark horse for the championship. 
uh, because he's coming off his career best season besides 2012, and he's in good equipment, so he can possibly be a contender here. Uh, but the year did not start off as he hoped. The Daytona 500 didn't really go as well. And then Atlanta, he got things turned around there. Uh, but he had a total of zero wins, seven top fives, 18 top tens, 138 laps led, a 10.7 average starting position, which is an improvement by three positions, and best in team, uh, his uh, best starting position out of his whole career at Stewart House Racing, and 15.2 average finish, which was kind of rough because he did happen to have a tight points battle with Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, and Daniel Suarez. It came down to the final race, and he happened to point his way in. Uh, because stage points were so key, he happened to win a lot of stage uh, points that year. But he had a total of seven DNFs, and like I said, DNFs take a big hit in the points. So that's why he was on the bubble. But fast forward to 2020, uh, many people thought that uh, Boyer, he could still become a contender for the championship. He started off the Daytona 500 uh, race with a sixth place finish, head over to Las Vegas, one of his worst statistical tracks, he did not perform well, and then you fast forward it to Auto Club, where he started on the pole and just went backwards. And then you go to Phoenix, where he's starting to get things going, and with a top 10 finish, and then Atlanta comes around. And that's when NASCAR decided they're going to postpone races to Mar or May, because uh, everything is going on right now, and it just ruined all their momentum. Him and his new crew chief, Johnny Klausmeyer. And since that, they only have two top fives, and the top fives are coming from Bristol, and yeah, it, it's just, come on now, he could have won Bristol, but uh, he has five top tens this year, a total of 139 laps led, and 139 laps led, most of them, or majority of them, I guess you can say, came from the Darlington race on that Wednesday night. He won both stages, and I just... I still can't believe he, he did not get the job done that night. He had the best car out there. But his average starting position in this year is a 15.2. And his average finish is a 15.1. Like I said, if your average finish is a 15-something, you're more than likely outside and not going to make the playoffs. Slim to none. If, if you're going to have a lot of multiple winners outside behind you, there's no way you're making the playoffs pointing your way in. Just impossible. So he's going to have to win a race this year. Uh, but he has a ton of one DNF this year. And that happens to be at Charlotte where he blew a uh, tire, actually. Arm control, he broke and hit the wall extremely hard. Glad he was all right there. That's a big hit. Uh, but there goes that. Uh, but the total wins out of the four-year stint so far at Stuart Haas Racing, he only has two wins. Uh, 24 top ten fives. Ouch. 52 top tens. A total of 789 laps led. His average starting position is a 13.2. His average finish is a 14.9 if you round it up to 15. And like I said, that's not too good. And it has a total of 18 DNFs. Uh, Boyer, though, earlier today, uh, this video will be coming up tomorrow, a day ago, I guess you could say, uh, Boyer was on a Zoom press conference with Bob Hockris, and he addressed the elephant in the room that he is talking uh they asked him about the contract situation he is talking to some of the partners but he had not started talking with the team yet and that just makes me think he wants to retire with Stuart Haas Racing he got he made that very clear uh but what if Stuart Haas Racing doesn't want him I I kind of got that feeling if Stuart Haas doesn't want him he's going to say in the back of his head screw them he doesn't want to he's wanting to go out there and prove them wrong and they made a mistake I don't think he's going to go away. I think he he can possibly become a, a contender for that 48 ride in 2021. How crazy it sounds, but you never know. As crazy as it is now in 2020, a lot can happen in 2021 by all means. Uh, but Clint Boyer, though, his time at Stuart House Racing, I think is going to start coming to an end. Do I think he retires? No, but it would not surprise me a bit if he ends up possibly the 48 car in 2021 just the way he's been talking recently he's just not want to retire yet he's still wanting to keep going and i just don't know if Stuart Haas racing is willing to keep him for another year but before i get off here i want to add that chase briscoe 
is their development driver. And next year is the last year of this new Gen 6 car. Because a year after that, they're going to do a uh, Gen X car, Gen 7 car, whatever you want to talk, call it. And it would be kind of dumb to move up Chase Briscoe to learn a new car for one year and the next year learn a whole different car there. So I think they might keep Briscoe in the Xfinity series for maybe one more year and then promote him the year after. Uh, so that's where you can maybe see Clint Boyer return next year. We'll see how things go there. But I think he goes somewhere else in 2021. Uh, but everybody, though, remember to please like and subscribe.